as we've been talking about recently, one of the most important points to understand and to realize, to, to see eventually in the practice of Dhamma, is this realization that we are not the body and we are not the mind. That neither of these things are I, mine or myself. And that when we take them as I, mine, myself, that's a cause of nothing but suffering, nothing but pain and sorrow. The easiest way we can begin to understand it is in regard to the body. When we say oneself, when we talk about I or myself, we're actually referring to this unity or this aggregate of body and mind. But mostly, most people, and most of the time, we really think we are the body. For example, we'll describe ourselves. I have blue eyes. I have brown hair. I am five foot, six inches tall. I weigh 120 pounds. But what's this I we're describing? Actually, we're just describing the body. If the body has no mind inside it, if it's a dead body, for example, or if it's a body in a coma, can it move by itself? Apart from the automatic pumping of the heart and the, the breath, can it do things voluntarily? Can it take actions or speak? Actually, without a mind, without consciousness, there is nothing to make the body move. It's no different to the wood and fabric of a puppet. As long as the puppet master is there, we get all caught up in the story that is being told and the movements that it's doing, and we get fooled into thinking that the puppet is awake, that it's a person. But as soon as the puppet master leaves, what is left? It's just a pile of wood and fabric. The body is the same. If we take it apart, what is it made of? What, what is it, really? It's just bones, flesh, skin, organs, hair blood, other liquids, and so on. As soon as we separate it from the mind, it's very clear that it's not ours, it's not us. The Buddha talks about different ways that we can observe or contemplate to get better understanding of this fact, the nature of the body. One is to take it apart and look at its parts all individually. So there's one meditation where he lists all the different main components of the body and especially their impurities in this body there are head hairs body hairs nail teeth skin flesh tendons bones bone marrow and so on another way is just to look at what it's made of and look at the nature of that thing what it's made of the body is made of organic matter it's like the leaves of the trees just at the moment as i speak if i look out the window the leaves are turning yellow and falling it's that time of year. So we see that their nature is that they fall and they rot and they decompose into the earth. The trees too will eventually go the same way. And even the rocks they stand on eventually will break down and go the same way. This is the nature of the earth. It doesn't stay the same, it changes. And this is totally normal and we don't expect it to be otherwise. But with our body... It's different because of just this, that we call it ours, that it's our body. When the nature of something is to change, to break down, to decompose and to die, that's just its nature, that's just the way it is. So where does the suffering appear? It's when you hold it, when you try to hold the thing whose nature is to change, to hold it, to fix it, to make it I to make it mine or myself. So of course, as a result, there is pain, sorrow, suffering. As soon as we take as mine something that is not ours and that was never ours and that never will be ours, we will have suffering because we're not seeing in accordance with the reality. We won't act in accordance with the reality and we can't think in accordance with the reality. We'll try to hold it. So that's why we are told to let go of the body and also to let go of the mind, but now the focus is on the body. Because when we try to hold it, it brings us only pain, sorrow and suffering. Ajahn often tells us about how one time when he was studying with his teacher Lumpa in Rheung in Thailand, 
The teacher was very old, he was almost dying. And one day, just as Ajahn happened to be near, he was walking down a set of steps and he started to fall. And so automatically Ajahn ran forward to support him, to stop him from falling. He grabbed hold of Ajahn's wrist and he said, Mi rup, mi tuk. My body, my suffering. Rup is short for rupa and duk was short for dukkha. But mi rup, mi duk, putting it together very short and concise. My body is my suffering. And it's not to say that there is only pain, sorrow and suffering when you have a body. Of course not. Of course there is joy. Of course there is pleasant things. Of course there is happiness to be had. Hearing good music, eating good food, seeing beautiful sights. It's all pleasant, but it changes. We can't keep it. We can't hold it. And it's this point that is the problem. It's this point that gives rise to the teaching to let go of it. The Buddha tells at several points, if there was no changing, if things were to stay the same, then there would be no teaching. There would be no teaching of Dhamma. There would be no need to practice. It's because it changes that we have to see that it's not mine and we have to act and behave in accordance with that. The changing of it is also suffering in itself. Mi rup mi duk also means this. Just seeing this in itself can help us to detach ourselves from it. When the body is young and healthy, then it is our friend. Then we don't even notice that we have a body. It does everything we want it to do. But actually it's like a story that the Buddha tells where there is an assassin that comes with the intention to kill a king. But he is a very sneaky assassin. Instead of just coming to kill the king outright, he comes and offers to serve the king. And he is his best servant absolutely reliable, always there when he needs him, for many years, until the moment when he spots his chance, and then he turns against him and becomes his greatest enemy and kills him. So the body is the same. It serves us well for a certain time. And then with one virus, or one little bacteria, or just one little point of the body that gets out of place, suddenly we are crying in pain, not able to move properly, not able to work, stuck in bed. It's so very fragile, the body. With one little touch or one little problem, just one cell that starts to multiply itself too much or gets out of control, now our whole life is upside down. If you think about it, every single cell in the body, every single point of the body is a place for a disease to enter, potentially. It's a site of potential pain. It's a site of potential suffering. Of course, we're bringing suffering on ourselves when we say that this mass of organic matter that we can't control, that is full of sites of suffering, that is changing, that is in its nature to decay and fall apart, is us. Then we fall apart, we decay, we break. We have pain with every little change in the body. But if it's not us, if we can detach ourselves from it, then that's just the way things are. There is still the physical pain, but actually most of the suffering that comes with having a body and making a self with the body is not just because of the physical pain at all. It's more the enormous mental load, the sorrow and distress of losing everything that we thought once belonged to us, of losing it little by little, or so suddenly all at once, losing our strength, losing our energy, losing our comfort, losing our beauty, losing youth, all the things that we identify with ourselves. Of course we suffer and cry when we lose all these things if we take them as ours. But if we realize from the beginning, before it happens, before it is too late, that it's not ours and it will never be ours, it's never ours to begin with, then the body still decays, the body still ages, the body still has accidents and gets sick. But it's the body getting sick. It's the body aging. It's like a leaf falling from a tree. It's the way of things. And it's nothing to do with us. So no reason to suffer for it. Another example that Ajahn gives a lot with regard to this same principle 
is that it's like the car that we rented. After a week or so, we have to give it back. We know we have to give it back. And if we take it as ours, they're still going to take it from us. But we'll suffer a lot more. While if we know that it's borrowed, it's a borrowed machine, then we can still look after it, we should still look after it and keep it running well, put fuel in it, but don't take it as ours. Know that it's borrowed and that we have to give it up or anyway it will be taken away, regardless of whether we want it or not. So just to give a summary of the main points, most of us take this body as ourself. But understanding, according to the way things really are, is seeing that when we take it as ourself, it's only a source of suffering, because it means that we are trying to hold and trying to fix something whose nature is to change, to degrade, and to die. So with every change, every degradation, and every little point in it that doesn't work, becomes the suffering of ourselves. We pull this suffering to ourselves. So the right way to see the body is just as it is, as like a puppet, a piece of wooden fabric, or like the leaves of trees, or like any piece of organic matter. Because it's changing, it brings suffering. And because it's changing and suffering, it's not dependable and it's not worthy of being called I, mine or myself. So the wise thing to do is to let go of it and let it just be as it is. Because either way, we're still going to lose it anyway.